Now, um, this morning, we're going to continue with our sermon series, uh, Kingdom Values. And, this to, and today, we are looking, we are beginning Matthew chapter 6, all right? So before we go into our sermon, I want to invite our scripture reader this morning, uh, Ryan, and he will lead us in reading this scripture passage. But before he does that, uh, the rest of you, if you can get your Bibles ready, turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. And as Ryan leads us in reading the scripture, you all can also do it in your own homes. All right, so I pass the time to Ryan. Thanks, Pastor, Pastor Matthew. Uh, can you all hear me clear? Yep. Right, all right, good. Uh, let's listen to the words of the Lord and may speak to us strength, life. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. This is taken from ESV. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their rewards. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. I pass the time back to you, Pastor Matthew. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much. Um, now, this is a very, again, one of the most uh, common uh, scripture passage uh, that we probably know if we have been long enough in the church as Christians. But then there is also a, 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 a very strong tendency of misinterpreting or misquoting this scripture, you know, and, and sometimes if we misquote or misinterpret this scripture, it can lead to a lot of, you know, uh, you know, wrong doctrines or wrong teachings concerning what Jesus is really trying to say through this scripture. Now, this scripture, if we were to look at it, just uh, browse through it, we can really get a surface message uh, very clearly that is, you know, uh, give sincerely and things like that. You know, don't be a hypocrite, you know, don't announce your offering and, and things like that. But then there are also other spiritual implications that actually runs deeper as we continue to uh, look at this uh, scripture passage, you know, as I was reflecting on this passage, you know, even uh, the week before I preached, I, I was preparing it, you know, um, I realized that this, this passage, just like the other passages that we have looked at, you know, over the past, you know, nine weeks, it has a lot of relations and a lot of links to the Beatitudes, which forms the opening sort of like, you know, the opening statement of what Jesus wants to teach his listeners concerning the kingdom of God. And so this morning, we're going to look at just three things that comes out from this simple teaching about giving to the poor and giving to the needy. Three spiritual implications that I hope we can practice and apply in our spiritual lives daily. And the first one we look, when Jesus starts off this scripture passage, when he starts off this lesson, he starts off with a warning in chapter 6, verse 1. And he says this to his listeners, Beware of practicing your righteousness. Now, this is something very weird, something we should pay attention because in the earliest, uh, in, in the beginning portion, in, this, in the Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But why now is he saying, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people? What about the later, uh, the, the earlier scripture of Matthew chapter 5 verse, you know, 5 verse 16, where Jesus says, in, 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 in the same way, let your light shine before others. But why is it in this particular scripture verse, he's saying, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Is it a contradiction? You know, is it, is Jesus confused at what he's teaching? Is there no uh, coherency in his teaching? You know, no, that's not the case. Because when Jesus is talking about uh, beware of practicing your righteousness, he's giving a warning concerning two things. The first one is concerning showing off 
your righteousness. And there is a big difference in, in, in shining the light of Christ. There is a big difference in hungering and thirsting for righteousness compared to showing off righteousness and holiness. Showing off righteousness and holiness is not done because we really want to please God. Showing off righteousness and holiness is not something that we do because, you know, hang on, huh? it's not something that we do because, you know, we, we, we desire to, to learn from God. We desire to live like Christ. Showing of righteousness and holiness, and holiness is something that we do out of pride. We want to show that I am better than someone. We want to show that, you know, I am I'm on a higher level than someone. And Jesus was speaking this message or giving this warning to a group of Pharisees who were very accustomed to putting on shows, demonstrations of righteousness. But these demonstrations of righteousness hardly translates into private and personal acts of righteousness. When Jesus talks about hungering and thirsting for righteousness, he's not just saying that we show off or we show people righteousness, but then in our personal lives, when no one is seeing, we sin against God as if there is no God in this world. We do not just walk around like what the Pharisees were doing back then with scripture bands on the top of their heads to show that I am so learned. I am so, you know, I, I know the scripture so well. I can memorize a hundred scripture verses. We do not walk around with scripture band, bands tied around our heads, but then back in our own private and personal lives. When no one is watching, we do not leave out the very words of scripture that we profess to know and memorize and display on the top of our heads. The, 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 the people back then, especially the richer communities of the Jewish society, not only were they showing off righteousness or, or pretending to be righteous, but they were also showing off righteousness in the form of the offerings that they gave. Going to the temple, you know, pouring in bags of money into the temple in front of large crowds of people. And all these were done not because they truly wanted to sincerely give an offering, but they just merely wanted to show people by giving and pouring in a large offering in public, by allowing the coins to rattle and clang and, and create a loud noise that resounds throughout the temple courtyards. They were showing off to others that, you see, I'm much more holier than you. I'm better off than you, you know, and you should admire me, you should envy me. But this public acts of display never translated into their own personal righteousness. In other words, when the curtains were drawn, when it's just them and themselves in their own homes, and no one is watching, none of this righteousness is displayed. And this is the warning that Jesus is giving to his listeners. If you practice righteousness before others, make sure your public righteousness and your private righteousness are equal. There is also a warning concerning this, um, this, this concept of purchasing favors or purchasing salvation through doing good deeds all right now back in those days there is also a common concept a common uh, practice of you know the more i give the more favors i would get and this act of you know purchasing salvation or purchasing favor from temple authorities it continued on even to the early century church you know the, the, the time of the, the roman catholics you know the, the the early church the medieval church i would call it and you know where people would come and the rich if they could afford and they could give more they would have more favors you know they could sin a little bit more because they could buy a little bit more forgiveness for themselves 
you know, whereas the poor could not do it because they were limited in their funds and limited in how much they could give to the church. And, and this was a common notion back then that if I give more, I can buy more favors. Or let's say I'm more pious or more religious, then I climb up faster in the ranks of leadership and authority, you know, in the temple system. There is also this notion that the more I give, the more good deeds that I do. And that's why Jesus talks about, you know, giving to the poor. The more good deeds I do, and the more people see the good deeds I do, it can sort of purchase my salvation. It can sort of cover up for the mistakes that I have done throughout the week or throughout the years or throughout the months. Now, this is what Jesus says when he says, when he gives them this warning that if you do all these things, if you practice righteousness only to be seen by others, or in other words, only to earn some favors or to buy certain concept or misunderstanding of salvation while you're on this earth, then the warning of Jesus is if you are doing righteousness, practicing righteousness only for these trivial returns, then there will be no reward from your Father who is in heaven. You do not practice righteousness. You do not do good deeds just because in that week you have done something wrong. And so I make up for the mistake by doing something good. You do not do good deeds just because you know you want to climb up the ranks. You do not just walk in righteousness because I want to show people, I want to show those who are in leadership, I'm a good person. I'm a righteous person. And so that, you know, they can promote me to the rank of Pharisees, Sadducees, or a teacher of the law so that I can sit in their circle of the elite group. Jesus is warning his listeners, don't practice righteousness just to purchase something, something so trivial on this earth. Instead, hunger and thirst for righteousness Hungering and thirsting for righteousness looks different from just a mere display of righteousness. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, every part of your life, every aspect of your life is lived in righteousness. Everything you do, every action that you do is a well-considered thought of righteousness. This is what it means to hunger and thirst for righteousness. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, it's not because you want to buy salvation as well. It's because you already have salvation and you are allowing the love, the grace, the mercy and the life of Christ to transform you. In that, and, and when that act of salvation transforms you, it allows you to live and walk in righteousness. As we spend some time to reflect, here are some questions that we can ask ourselves. Some serious questions that Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4 provides to us. The first is this, am I doing good because I sincerely, and the key word here is sincerely want to walk in righteousness and to be like Christ? The second question that all of us need to ask ourselves is this, is my public and my private righteousness equal? That means what people see in church and what people do not see, the righteousness, the life that people do not see, is it equal? If I'm holy, if I display holiness in public, am I also living a holy life in private? when no one is watching. What is my motivation for righteousness? Am I motivated by the love of Christ for me? Or am I merely motivated by what I want people to see of me? Or what I want to gain while I'm on this earth? What is my motivation for righteousness? You know, these are all questions that... Jesus puts forth to his listeners back then 
And these are questions that Jesus also puts forth to us today as his modern day listeners. When we listen about righteousness, when we want to practice righteousness. Now, as we move on, second thing that Jesus talks about is no praise. Righteousness actually has no praise. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. When you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Or may I add on something? I know the, the Bible says do not add on any word to the scripture, but this is not adding on a lesson, all right? This is just adding on a word to make it a little bit more accurate. In the last sentence, it says, truly I say to you, they have received their reward. To add on one word that will make this sentence a little bit more uh, uh, clearer. Truly I say to you, they, will, they have already received their reward. Now, when Jesus you know, is talking about no praise, when, he talk, when he's talking about when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet. You know, we can sort of picture this, you know. In our modern day application, think of Instagram, think of Facebook. And, and especially during this recent MCOs, you, you see, you know, certain groups or certain people, certain public figures, giving to the poor, giving to the needy. And when they give, you know, usually it's accompanied with, you know, media teams, photographers that photograph their every gift that they give, you know. And usually they have a publicist that, you know, writes up a very long post, you know, describing why they have to give, what is this person going through, you know, what they have given, the amount of money they have, they have given. Well, I understand for certain public figures, they do this because, you know, they are using public funds and the public, you know, it's sort of like a public accountability. But then you have also certain individuals, you know, that it's not me being judgmental. It's not me being critical, but it's just, you know, certain individuals that are really just doing it for the gram. All right. I'm not going to mention who, but, you know, really, you know, it's just doing for the gram, doing it to feel good, to get the likes, you know, or, you know, to, to, to get some comments saying, oh, how, how kind-hearted you are, you know, and things like that. Now, this is not me being critical, all right? But this is what Jesus was saying when he says, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you. Sound no trumpet before you. Now, what are some implications when Jesus is saying, sound no trumpet? Don't expect praises for every act of righteousness or every good deed that you do. Because when Jesus is saying this, what he's saying, every act of righteousness and every good deed that you do ultimately must glorify God and not yourself. Every good deed that we do in the name of Christ must glorify God. Every act of righteousness must glorify God. When Jesus talks about sounding of a trumpet in the synagogue, it was a ritual. It was a, a, a law back then that, you know, for every uh, sacrifice that was brought in, of course, not every sacrifice. There are many sacrifices. And, 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 and for most sacrifices, a trumpet will be sound, except for what we would call the free will offering, all right? The free will offering, there is no trumpet sounded. But for a peace offering, Let's say a peace offering is what back then the, the Jewish people would know as an additional offering. You know, a peace offering is an additional offering that you would give. And this posed a challenge. It posed a big challenge because for every peace offering that is given, it's based on the ability of that person to be able to give a peace offering. And for every peace offering that is given, a trumpet is sounded. And when the trumpet is sounded, usually people will say, oh, wow, that person has given a peace offering. And the more offering is given, let's say one person gives, you know, five, six times the peace offering, then that's how many times a trumpet is sounded. 
you know, and Jesus is probably, I'm saying probably all right now, I'm not saying that Jesus was, he was speaking out against this issue. He was probably relating to this issue of the sounding of a trumpet every time a peace offering is given, you know. And when Jesus is saying this, basically he's speaking out to the times, to the issue of the times where, you know, where when someone gives an offering, an additional offering, a trumpet is sound, is sounded. What happens? It is drawing attention. It is drawing praise to the person who is giving the offering. It is drawing the focus away from God to whom the offering is given, to whom the act of worship is being given to. Is drawing the focus away from God, but to that person where it turns out and ends up being the people who are there watching the, the offering being given and the trumpet being sounded, looks at themselves and say, Why can't I be like that person? Why do not why I do not have the money, the ability to give additional offerings like that person so that a trumpet can be sounded for me as well? You see what's happening here? Instead of an offering glorifying God, the offering turned up, ended up being a, a, a means to glorify the person. And that's why Jesus is saying, if you practice righteousness, don't sound a trumpet for yourself. Because every act of righteousness, every act of doing good must glorify God. Every act of doing good also must point to God. Contemporary listeners today, every act of righteousness, every act of doing good must point people to Christ and not to yourself. When you show off righteousness, when you request for self-praise, when you request for the sounding of trumpets for every offering you give, it is not pointing people to God. It is not pointing people to Christ for us, the modern Hey, listeners, it is pointing people to ourselves. When Jesus talks about hungering, thirsting for righteousness, when he talks about letting your light shine forth before men, it's, the message is clear. You do, you walk in righteousness, you let your light shine before men so that people will see Christ, people will see God, so that God will be exalted in your midst and not yourself. But if righteousness and good deeds are done only to draw attention to yourself, then it is not righteousness at all. And, and like what Jesus said earlier on, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Jesus sort of repeats this same lesson when he says, you have received your reward. If you do not Walk in righteousness to glorify God or to point people back to God. Then it is not righteousness at all. Again, as we reflect, what can we learn from this passage? Now, I know this, this morning's message really speaks straight to the heart. But this is the message of the kingdom of God. The kingdom values. And as we continue talking about kingdom values and righteousness, let's ask ourselves some of this question. My acts of righteousness, my acts of doing good, does it glorify God amongst men? Take it a step further. My acts of service in the church, acts of ministry, leadership in the church, does it glorify God? Or is it merely a position that I take on because I want self-praise? Because I want the glory all for myself? My act of righteousness, does it direct people's attention to Christ? Or does it merely stir up people's envy towards me? Wow, he's such a holy man. He's such a righteous man. He's such a spiritual person. If that is the case, then probably we have got it all wrong. 
because our righteousness is supposed to point people to Christ. I am righteous not because I am so capable, not because I'm so strong. I am righteous because of Christ. Because of the power of Christ that is in me. Because of the love of Christ that has saved me from my sins. Because of the grace of Christ that enables me to be holy. That's why I can be holy. Does my righteousness point people to Christ? Have I been doing good? so that the love of Christ is displayed through me? Or am I doing good merely just to fulfill, you know, some, I don't know, some expectations? Am I doing good, you know, just to buy penance for my sin? When we do good, remember, we are being the hands and feet of Christ. In this world. It's the best way. To show the love of Christ. To the people around us. Moving on to the last one. The last point. Righteousness. Is not seen. Again. When we read this passage. We think. We are thinking. Is Jesus contradicting himself? Early on, he's telling me to show my light, shine my light before others. He's telling me to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Then here he's saying, don't show people your righteousness. What is Jesus talking about? Well, if you've been listening to what I've been saying earlier, you would understand where I'm going. But if you have not been listening, well, listen carefully to this last point as well, because I'm going to explain a little bit more. You know. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, 3 to 4, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. What is Jesus saying? He's saying when we walk in righteousness, when we do good, it is sacrificial. And when Jesus is talking about sacrificial love, He's showing his listeners, this is the kind of love. This is the kind of righteousness I came to show people. Sacrificial. Sacrificial is not just in terms of, you know, laying down your lives, you know, being a martyr for Christ. Sacrificial also means even if no one sees, even if no one remembers the good deeds, even if no one knows that it is me who gave to the poor, who did all these good things, even if no one knows, I still continue to do good. This is what it means to be sacrificial. Jesus performed many miracles. He healed many sick people during his three years of ministry. But at the end of the day, people still wanted him dead. People still wanted him dead. People still cursed him at the end of the day. People still spit at him at the end of the day. But Jesus never said, oh, because you did all this to me, because you forgot what I've done to you, you know what? I'm not going to go to the cross. I'm not going to give my life for you. I'm not going to love you anymore. I'm going to run back to God the Father and say, God, you know what? Create a new earth, a new group of people because these people are hopeless. No, thank God Jesus was so sacrificial in his love for us. Otherwise, we would not be saved today. Otherwise, we would not have salvation today. And Jesus is teaching his listeners back then that if you truly hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you will understand sacrificial love. Doing good sacrificially, even when no one is seeing, even when no trumpet is sounded for you, even when no praise is heaped on you for every good deed that you do, even when no favors are, 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 are given to you for every act of good deed, yet you still continue to do good. That is true righteousness. That is what it means to have your light shine before men. Sacrificial. Doing good is also sincere you know sincere that's what it means when jesus say 
when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You know, so that your and, and your giving, let it be done in secret. In the other gospels, Jesus talked about your prayer in the closet, not like the, the, the Pharisee, the self-righteous Pharisee who beat his who oh, not, not beat his chest, I make sure. <laughs> Sorry. The, the Pharisees who stand out and, and you know in pious acts of religion, you know, pray nice, profound, uh, liturgical prayers but then prayers that don't really mean a single thing this is what jesus says your acts of righteousness let it be sincere in the context of matthew chapter 6 don't just do good to gain favors don't just do good to look good in the society don't just do good because you want to fulfill a guilty conscience don't do good because you want to buy salvation do good because you sincerely want to do good. When I talk about sincerely in spiritual terms, when we talk about sincerely in, in, the, term, in the light of being a kingdom citizen, it means knowing that this is what God the Father wants all of us to do. It means walking in righteousness, understanding what true righteousness really means. And only when we understand what true righteousness means can we be sincere in our acts of righteousness and not doing good just because I want something in return. As we close today's sermon, what can we learn? Let me just summarize very quickly. Do good, practice righteousness in your private and in your public lives. Do good so that God may be glorified in our community. We talk about God be glorified. We do good so that people are also you know, directed back to God, directed to Christ. Finally, do good sacrificially, sincerely.